another video. I'm excited to be doing a, something a little different today. Uh, as you can tell by the title, we're going to be doing a mock iOS interview that you would encounter at Facebook. So before we get started with these actual two questions here, uh, I'm going to have a couple disclaimers. So number one, we're working in Objective-C, as you can see, and the reason for that is Facebook and some other companies, Google and the likes, still use Objective-C and Objective-C++. If you work in Swift, it's cool to whiteboard over there uh, in Swift if your interviewer is okay with it. Uh, the language translation is not too hard to do. It's a con concept that we really want to focus on. Uh, number two, so kind of my background, I've gone through the Facebook interview loop twice with two offers respectively. I currently do not work there. Um, I work elsewhere, but uh, kind of like firsthand knowledge of what my experience was like. Uh, and number three, these two questions are not from my particular interview because of the non-disclosure agreement, but they are interview questions that I know for a fact that Facebook has asked colleagues of mine that do still work there. So with that being said, let's dive right into the questions. So the first question here, um, we have given an array of numbers, we want to do these two things. We want to return the number of zeros in an array, and we want to return the array with the zeros moved to the front. So first and foremost, for both of these questions, actually this one and this one down here, we want to ask our interviewer some clarifying questions before we make any assumptions that we're going to make. So the first thing that I would ask is, will this array ever be empty? What type of numbers are going to be in this array? So are they going to be floats, doubles, ints, NS numbers? Um, and I would also ask if it's cool to do these two parts of this question in two different methods we write to keep our code modular and more to the point. Uh, the interviewer might be looking for something in particular, so these will definitely uh, give you some bonus points on clarifying question and uh, make sure you and they are on the same page. So for the sake of this question, Let's assume that our inbound array is an array of NS numbers. There'll always be ints inside of that NS number, and it will never be empty. And we're going to also assume that we can write two methods to take care of this. So um, let's dive right in and write two functions that solve this problem. So first and foremost, we want to write a function that returns a NS number. And this is going to be number of zeros in and this is going to be an array of ns numbers and this is fairly straightforward what we want to do is we want to create a count we're going to return a ns number and it's going to be a number with that count we want to iterate over this array, and every time we come across the x position, and if it's a zero, we want to, whoops, increment our count. So it's important that we test our solution um, now that we have one written out, but I'm gonna actually solve this one as well, and we'll test them together for the sake of time in this video not being too long. The other thing to make sure you point out to your interviewer is, this solution is O of N, where N is the length of this array. Because we iterate over the entire array, um, we need to uh, account for the time complexity in terms of runtime. Something that I didn't mention because I made an assumption, and something you should mention in the interview, or ask rather, is if this inbound array is sorted. If this is sorted, this solution is very, very different, right? If this is ordered uh, ascending, we could just find all the zeros in the beginning of the array and stop iterating on this array once we come across a one or anything that's not a zero. So make sure you ask all your clarifying questions. So for the second part of this um, question, we want to return an array, the same array, with all the zeros moved to the front. So an assumption that you can clarify here is what do we do if there are no zeros? Do we just return the same thing or something else? Uh, for the sake of this question, let's assume we just return the same array. So we're going to write a function that returns an array. It's going to be an array of NS numbers. It's going to be move zeros to front. And we're going to actually pass in a mutable array.
And again, that's going to be a mutable array of NS numbers. And the reason we've picked this mutable array is so we don't have to create another array in which we're going to copy and move the zeros. This is an efficiency um, thing that I pointed out in terms of space time. Uh, you want to use it as little memory or as efficient of a solution. Um, and it's important to point this out to your interviewer. Uh, it's definitely something that they look for, and it's very, very important, especially at a company like Facebook, where scale and efficiency is important. So what we want to essentially do here is, let's say we have an array of something like that. We're going to basically start iterating this array from the back to the front. We're also going to have an index that starts at the front. And every time we find a zero, we're going to exchange it with the index position in the front and move the front position inwards. We're also going to make sure that once the two indices collide, if we have a flag here and if we have a flag here, once they collide inward somewhere in the middle, we need to stop iterating so we don't inversely move the zeros back. The way we're going to do this is like so. We're going to have an integer, which is going to be, let's call it j. It'll be the front, like I mentioned. We're going to write a for loop, which is going to be int x, which is going to start, well, let's do an integer actually. This is going to be the count minus 1. And for some reason, oh, I forgot the semicolon. That's important. Um, and we're going to say while uh, x is greater than or equal to 0, and we're going to decrement x. Cool. Uh, so now what we're going to do in here is we're going to check if the thing that we find at x int value, because this is an array of ns numbers, is 0, and x is greater than j, we're going to swap the items at x and j, and we're going to increment x, moving it into the array. So we're going to say array exchange objects at x and j, and we're going to say j plus plus. And this is our solution. So let's actually um, test this out. So I would recommend testing this out on a whiteboard, of course, like create a mock array. Because we're in Xcode, we can actually type up an array really fast and do it ourselves. So let's say we have an array. And bear with me two seconds. And first, we're going to test the solution of number of zeros. So we're going to say and we're going to log out the int value. We're going to run it in our simulator here, and we'll see how many zeros we have, which is 3, which is indeed the correct answer. And Next, we're going to test out our second function, which is going to return a array. And this one is going to be uh, move zeros to front. And we want to remember that we need to pass in an NS mutable array. So we're going to say like so, and hopefully all of our zeros are at the front of this array, which they are, beautiful. So uh, I know I went through these questions a little fast, and there's one more question we're going to tackle, but it's important that um, you are very concise in how you kind of portray these questions and solutions, not too concise where the interviewer has to play a mind-guessing game with you about your assumptions and your thought process. It's great to verbalize it. But you want to be short and sweet to the point, uh, understand the efficiencies, trade-offs of time, space, complexity, and make sure you test your answer. It's very, very important. Um, it's something that I've seen a lot of candidates that I've interviewed myself and colleagues uh, miss, and it 
sometimes testing your own solution helps to identify bugs that you might have accidentally introduced. And it's okay to introduce them to a degree, but if you can't identify them or don't bother checking your work, it's a bit of a red flag um, because you might do that in your actual day-to-day -day work should the company hire you. So let's move on to this question, which is a little more iOS-y and personally, I think a little more interesting. So this question uh, more or less says, given a UI view, uh, in a view hierarchy, we want to accomplish two things. We want to return whether or not the hierarchy contains that UI view. And we also want to return the super view of that UI view. Uh, and I guess the assumption here would be if the hierarchy contains it. So similar to the first question, I would clarify first and foremost, the hierarchy, are we going to get a node in here somewhere? Or are we going to get the root node of the hierarchy? I would also clarify if what if the hierarchy does not contain the UI view, do we return nil or do we return the node again, the root node? Um, and for the sake of this question, let's assume that we are given the root node as the start of the hierarchy. And if the UI view, if the hierarchy does not contain the target view, we'll, we're going to return nil. So again, we're going to tackle these questions in two different methods. Uh, so let's get into it. So this is a very typical recursion question but it's also paired with iOS, uh, obviously with the view hierarchy stuff. So it's a good it's a good question that people like to ask, which tests a, a bit of your domain knowledge and also your algorithm background in terms of recursion and big O notation, uh, runtime complexity, space time. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a method that returns a bool and it's gonna take two UI views, so we're going to say view, and it's going to say node contains target, which is going to be target, and let's return false. We need a base case for our recursion, so we're going to say if node.subviews.count subviews.count is zero. We can return if the node equals a target. Else, we want to iterate over all the subviews of the node. And what we want to do is, let's grab our subview first. What we want to do is we want to say if our recursive call of this function returns true, we want to return true. And the reason we need this if check here is if we just return this, if we just take this whole thing and throw this here, you'll see that we actually get a warning well, right now we get an error because I decided not to delete this, but um, more or less, yeah, there it is. So we'll get a warning because if we return on this uh, for loop the very first time that it runs, the subsequent subviews and the subsequent runs of this, this for loop won't actually ever execute. And the warning actually says that exactly perfectly. So we want to make sure we have that if check. This is a little tougher to actually test out with the example, but you can definitely verbalize the solution. So let's say we're given this node as a target and this node as a root. We're essentially conducting breadth first search, uh, excuse me, depth first search. We're going to first pick our subviews. Uh, we're going to have more, we're going to have more than zero subviews and we're going to iterate over each of these. So first this one recursively go down here and see if we have the uh, target we're looking for, then go down this one, then go down this one, and eventually, let's say we're looking for this, we'll come across this, return true, because this guy doesn't have any, um, this guy doesn't have any children in terms of subviews, and we can return it. So something to keep in mind is our base case and this solution um, takes into account that we're only checking if the two views match in the case where it doesn't have any subviews. So what happens if we're looking for this? So what we should actually also do 
is say if the node, or sorry, if the sub is the target, we should also return true because we want to make sure that we account for all of these subviews and not just the very last leaves, leaves on uh, this tree, which is more or less our view hierarchy. So that's part one of this question. Part two is very similar, so we can just edit this method that we've written. Um, and that's to return the super view of our target. So we'll modify this to be a UI view. We'll modify this to be nil. We will modify this to be We're going to get a result out of this recursive call. And we want to return the super view. And in our base case, what we're going to do is we're going to say if this the node equals a target, we'll return the target's super view, which could be the node super view as well, because they're the same at that point. And that basically takes care of the second part of the question. So let's just walk through it real fast because I edited pretty quickly. We modified it to return a UI view, which can which will be the super view of the target if we find it. If the node doesn't have any subviews, we're going to come in here and check if the node is the target. And if it is, we're going to return the target super view. Uh, inversely, if the node does have subviews, we're going to iterate over each of those subviews. If the subview is the node, we'll again return the subview's super view because they're siblings um, at that point. And uh, if we don't come into this case, we're going to get a result out of recursively calling this function. And if we recursively call this function, we're going to basically say um, if this result isn't nil because we want to make sure we didn't come down here in the recursive call, which means basically we found a case where the node uh, the node contains a target, we're going to return the results super view. Actually, I made a mistake. We're not going to return the results super view because if we get a result, we're going to have come in here. Hence, we already, we already got the super view of it. So if we return the results super view, we would be going to the super views super view, which is not what we want to do. So we'll actually just return result. And actually, that was a very good uh, kind of unplanned example of why checking your solutions is extremely important. Sometimes these little gotchas and these little typos, especially in a whiteboard when you're not in a coding environment, um, are very easy to make. Uh, but yeah, that's a good look at uh, two uh, common questions that Facebook will ask in iOS interview loops. Um, these are definitely questions that you should be well prepared for. You should understand the runtime and space time nuances of them. There are definitely multiple approaches to them as well. So understand the trade-offs of your solution. Check your work. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, this has been heavily requested um, by folks on this channel and friends of mine. If you liked it, please do leave a like. It helps out the video a lot. If you're new, subscribe to the channel. I do a lot of iOS tech, interview, mobile, entrepreneurship stuff here in their videos. Um, and I've been posting consistently and I'm looking forward to kind of growing this channel and uh, glad you're here for the journey. So that, with that being said, thanks for watching. And I'll catch you in the next video.